Welcome into Scoops with Danny Mack on Fox 2. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Last weekend, the Cardinals and Major League Baseball got through Memorial Day. And in many circles, that's considered a measuring stick for where your team is at for the year. For the Cardinals, they've been hit with injuries. Seen the introduction of their newest star, Nolan Arenado, and have a potential Rookie of the Year in Dylan Carlson. Tonight, I'll visit with the president of baseball operations, John Mozeliak, and get an update on where this team stands. Also, I don't know about you, but it's hard to believe it's been 10 years since the Cardinals won the 2011 World Series. Periodically, throughout the summer, I'll be catching up with players from that championship team. This evening, it's a visit with the man who closed it all out, and that's former closer Jason Mott. The Cardinals wrapped up their series with the Reds this weekend at Bush, and looking ahead, they have interleague play beginning Tuesday night against Cleveland, and then finish up the week with three games at Wrigley against the Cubs. Now, the Cardinals have been at the top of the Central Division for the better part of this season, and let's bring in the president of baseball operations, John Mozeliak. Hey, Mo, great to see you. It's hard to believe, but this time last year, we were just about done with a 60-game schedule. And now we're a third of the way through this year. What are some of the trends with your club and, and what you're seeing right now in Major League Baseball? You know, I think the biggest thing you're seeing is the, just the amount of injuries. And um, you're seeing it with our club. And, and, of course, you're seeing it throughout baseball. And I don't know if there's any direct correlation between what happened last year but where we are today. But there's, there's no disputing the fact that, you know, there are a lot of injured players out there. And you're really just trying to manage through that. You know, I think the biggest thing you're seeing right now in the game of baseball is, is injuries. I think maybe the other uh, uh, trend that, that we're seeing is, is a lot more pitches thrown in a game, which um, if you're the, the viewer or fan, you, you might find that uh, a little frustrating at times. But, you know, I think when you look at what we're trying to do here with the Cardinals, you know, the biggest thing for us is to try to get our outfield back healthy, waiting on uh, Bader and um, obviously D. Young with both um, rib rib injuries. And so we're just going to have to be patient there. But, you know, playing good baseball and, uh, you know, overall still very excited about our club. But, you know, recognizing this is a, a true 162, it's a long year, and we just have to remind ourselves to be patient. Yeah, and I think that's probably the hardest part from a fan's perspective and those that follow the game. You look at all the transactions, you see the injuries. And you want to see teams make a move, but I would imagine in your seat that you have to be patient and look at the long haul of this year. Well, I think you'd agree. We've never hesitated to try to fill needs from within. And, and so, you know, obviously if we felt like we had some internal promotions that we could help fill some gaps or, or plug some holes, we would certainly do that. Um, but I think the, the big thing is, is when people start talking about going outside, looking for a starter for your rotation, you know, th those are going to be difficult to do, especially at this time of year, because, you know, the trading deadline momentum usually starts, you know, mid to late June. To your point, um, obviously, if, if there's some ways that we can bolster this this team throughout the summer, we're going to have to think about it. But I think the most important thing that we have to do right now is try to find a way to get healthy. Where would you be in, in your seat without the flexibility of Tommy Edmond and how he's helped you uh, with all these injuries? You know, we've always... I, I remember like when, when the Cubs had, had signed Zobrist and watching him be so flexible and, and, and how much he helped that team because of that flexibility. We always were hoping that we would have some way of, of having a, a way to replicate that. And, you know, Tommy's really fit that bill. I mean, he could really play almost anywhere and, and do it well. And so given the injuries, given what's going on, it's, it's, it's been impressive. And, and just to touch on, on sort of guys stepping up when they get that opportunity, even like in a Mundo Sosa for someone that, that has never gotten any opportunity with the St. Louis Cardinals and then due to the injury to Paulie D, all of a sudden is getting that chance and, and obviously uh, making the most of it. So, you know, baseball's a funny game in the sense of will people step up and take advantage of these opportunities? And when guys get them, what do they do with them? And, and so it's really nice to see internally what some, some of the things that we're seeing with the Cardinals. You know, anytime I've spoken with you, you've mentioned that Tyler O'Neill just needs a chance to play and watch out what he can do. Well, are we finally seeing the, the full package now of Tyler O'Neill? You know, I hope so. Um, I, I, again, I always fall back to sort of like what we've seen in recent history. And you think about like what Adolis Garcia has been doing down in Texas or someone like uh, 
Randy Rosarena, what he was doing in Tampa. The, the, the key is, is you've got to give these guys a chance to play. And unfortunately, you know, we weren't able to do that. And in Tyler's case, we are. And, you know, hopefully people understand why you have to have patience in this. But when you're always trying to win and you're trying to be competitive you're, and, and to your earlier point of trying to make moves to fill gaps, you know, sometimes decisions you make are ones that um, in hindsight, maybe you wish you held on to. So um, in Tyler's case, I think the key for him is, is just to be able to go out and play. Glad to see he was able to bounce back from that minor injury. But, um, you know, certainly think he's one of those guys that has incredible power. And the fact that he's starting to hit the ball, not just for power, but putting the ball in play, is pretty exciting. In your seat, Mo, can you have nostalgia watching Yachty and Wayno, or do you have to take a step back and not be a fan? You know, they've been great this year. And it's really just, it's been a pleasure watching these guys. You know, candidly, I, I think I probably can can embrace it more than anyone because I've known these guys so long. I, I remember when they were in the minor leagues and, and, and watching what they're doing. So my admiration for how they're playing at their age and playing at the level that, you know, candidly is really helping our club. If you're a young player and you're getting exposed to, to watching how Yachty prepares and, and Adam prepares for a game, if you're not soaking that up, you're probably in the wrong business. So to answer your question, though, I mean, I, I have great appreciation for what they're doing, and I certainly look at it a little differently than just wearing a general manager's type hat. I really feel like um, those guys mean a lot to me, not only um, what they do on the field, but just as friends and what they've meant to this organization, because these guys are complete baseball players and they're complete humans and, and they're just amazing guys. And so to watch what they're doing is, is really fun. Yachty and Wayno, two of the best in Cardinals history. Now the Cardinals have one of the best infielders of his generation. That's Nolan Arenado. A closer look at the Cardinals third baseman coming up next on Fox 2. Scoops with Danny Mac is brought to you by Schnucks, Lou Fuse, Royal Banks of Missouri, and Ryan Kelly, the home loan expert. It's a fly ball. Left side, Arenado racing after it. Oh, he got it! Oh, what a play! Nolan Arenado with his back to the infield. The shift was there. Long way to go. Nolan being Nolan. Oh, what a play! Arenado, a drive deep left at the wall. Welcome to St. Louis, Nolan. An opening day. He's been exactly what the Cardinals were looking for. Cardinals third baseman Nolan Arenado, exceptional player. Let's bring back in John Mosellock. Mo, we know you wanted Arenado for a long time, and we're finding out that he really wanted to be in St. Louis as well. Uh, can you shed some light on the relationship between Nolan right now and the organization? You know, I, I think it's worked out very well, needless to say. But if you truly love the game of baseball, and you have a chance to play in a city that embraces the game. You have a chance to play in a city that has great history of the game. And then you have a chance to play with with a Wainwright or a Molina or a Goldie. I mean, these are things that, that just mean a lot to someone like, like Nolan. And so for him to embrace it has been really impressive. And I, I guess I would say that I'm not surprised because everything we had heard about him was exactly what you're seeing. But when you do see it in person, you realize how much it does mean to him. You have a great relationship with Alex Reyes. How much personal satisfaction do you get watching Alex back and now competing at such a high level? You know, it's great to just see it all come together. And I think he's really embracing this opportunity to have those high lever situations to be able to close. Because you think back over the last five or six years, he's a name that we talked about every off season what he's going to mean to our roster. And unfortunately, it didn't come to fruition. And now you're seeing that type of impact now. He's embracing it. He's learning. He's growing. It's great to see. I think, uh, you know, he's in a good place mentally and uh, clearly uh, a key, 
key player to the success of this club. It's great to have baseball back in the minor leagues, and the season is unique in the fact that they are experimenting with new rules for the game. Are you seeing any trends right now with baseball in the minors because of these new rules? Probably the the, the one that's most interesting is what you're seeing down in uh, with our, our um, team down in Jupiter, so our Palm Beach Club, and they have the automated strike zone. And what you're seeing there is a lot of walks. That's something that's that's been an interesting takeaway. I haven't had much feedback on on you know the two pick limit to, to um, when you're pitching. I, I haven't heard anything about the the one inch bases. Um, whether it's helping or hurting. So I think time will tell on that. But, you know, I kind of had something I put in my calendar uh, a while back that I was going to look at middle of July and see if anything stood out. So I was going to let data happen, allow us to collect it, and then see if we can determine if anything was helpful or, or hurtful in that. Final question for you, Mo. June 14th, Bush Stadium will be at full capacity. It's been a long road to get there. What do you think the atmosphere will be like with 100% capacity on June 14th at Bush? You know, I think people are excited about it. I think, you know, players are feeding off the intensity that you're seeing in the fans or in the stands, I should say. And so, you know, as we get to June 14th, I think there's going to be some electricity in the air. And I think everybody's just looking forward to it. I think everybody would agree our country just wants to start moving forward. And so as vaccination rates go up, as COVID rates go down, we're getting into a position where we think we can take that big step forward. And that's great news. Hey, Mo, as always, thanks for coming on the show. You bet. Coming up, he got to live out the dream of so many. He closed out Game 7 of the World Series. Jason Mott did that in 2011. We'll visit with the former Cardinals closer next on Scoops with Danny Mac. Scoops with Danny Mac is brought to you by Blue Tail Medical Group, Royal Banks of Missouri, Hair Saloon for Men, and Triad Bank. It is hard to believe it's been 10 years since the Cardinals championship of 2011 on the mound for that final out Jason Mott and he joins us now. First of all, Jason, great to see you. I see beard still intact, so not much has changed there, has it? Uh, it's a little bit, it's got a little bit more of nature of nature's highlights, but uh, yeah, it's still, it's still there hanging out. Uh, like I said, I, I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. I, I don't think my life, my, my, my wife will let me shave all this off just yet, so. And that's the interesting part because most wives wouldn't want that beard and ask them to shave, but she likes it. Yeah, she's seen me without it for about uh, two weeks uh, throughout the whole time, you know, the whole 12, 13 years we've been together. And uh, it was it was when I was with the Braves for a hot second in the minor leagues, had to shave it. And needless to say, she didn't come see me uh, during that minor league stint. She was like, you can just stay there. When it grows back, I'll come back and see you. Uh, so it was, it was pretty funny. <laughs> you know, you're coaching now in Memphis, Tennessee. What's that transition been like from being a player to now coaching in baseball? Uh, it's been awesome. Uh, you know, the uh, the kids we have there, I'm helping coaching here uh, in Memphis, like you said, at uh, Christian Brothers High School. Uh, and it's uh, it's been great. Like I said, the kids have been great. The coaches have been great. The parents have been great. Uh, it's just a good experience to be able to get back out there and, uh, you know, get back. I think, you know, I don't know everything about baseball, and I'm still learning stuff up there um, at the high school level, the way things go and what you do and what you have to do. But uh, it's been awesome, uh, you know, just being able to work with the kids and still be in the game and, you uh, you know, try to give back and help out as much as I can. You know, you've got remarkable perspective to share with the kids, having been a position player and then turned into a closer. So I'm sure one of the themes that you tell the kids all the time is to never give up because you just never know in this game. Yeah, I mean, and I, I, I've talked to a bunch of the kids. Like one of the first things when I went up there uh, talking to them, I was like, listen, I was like, I didn't I didn't make my freshman high school team. You know, so, I mean, it was one of those things that, you know, when it, when it came to me trying out my freshman year, like I wasn't big enough, I wasn't good enough, um, you know, so I was told no there, um, you know, and then when I went on to college, ended up going to the college where my high school coach went and was like, hey, trust me, 
you know, same thing there. Like people are like, ah, you're not really what we're looking for this and that. And I got drafted, ended up doing that. And they're like, Hey, you can't hit, you got to pitch. I was like, okay, all right. You know, just kept grinding. And then even with pitching, it was like, Oh, you can't just throw that fastball. You got to do this. You got to do that. And, you know, I did learn a cutter and stuff like that, but I was majority fastball and just kind of ended up having to do, you know, do what I did try to be the best me I could be. And, uh, you know, I just kept grinding. That's why I tell these kids, you got to keep going and keep working hard and giving it everything you got. Um, whether it's a good day, bad day, whatever it is, go out there and give it everything you got and leave it all out there. I mentioned earlier, hard to believe it's been 10 years since you were on that mound and closed out the World Series. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, you know, we, we were talking about this the other day. Um, so I was talking to you a little bit before. And uh, so my nephew just won the Tennessee State Championship uh, in baseball the other the other day. And there's a funny, not funny picture. There's a picture of him um, on stage with us, like holding the World Series trophy. Um, and it was, it was always one of those things we always joked about, like, like, man, you said, you know, like how he was eight years old at the time, you know what I mean? He literally, he just graduated high school. He won the state championship on Friday. Um, uh, and so me and him took a picture of me and him holding the trophy, kind of like we did when, when yeah. we won the world series. And I was like thinking, I was like, man, like, that's crazy. Um, definitely flying by. And I, I remember some parts of it, like it was yesterday. Um, it's, uh, Pretty, pretty amazing um, to think about it. Um, but yeah, it definitely doesn't seem like like 10 years. Take me back there. What was that moment like coming out of the bullpen to close out game seven? It's every kid's dream to be in your shoes at that time. Uh, you know, for me, that, that was probably one of the first times that I actually, if you if you watch the video, like I come down out of the tunnel or not the tunnel, down the ramp. And I kind of like, I kind of like looked around. I get, I'm getting goosebumps now, but I kind of just like looked around for maybe one of the first times um of the postseason you know coming down the ramp in game seven um i think i finally just took a second and was like man this is this is pretty cool you know like uh and kind of hearing the fans you know i was coming down from bullpen on my right hand side um and just kind of went out there and you know tried to do what i did and i was throw strikes and get some outs what was it about that team that got you over the top and allowed you to come back in the regular season and ultimately uh win it all you know, I think we all just went out there and um, really just gave it everything we had. Like, I remember, you know, one of the talks we had late August, uh, you know, Carp called a team meeting and it was like, guys, we need to go out there. We need to we need to start playing a little bit better baseball. You know, this isn't this isn't what this isn't conducive of, of, of how we play. We just grinded. We just left it all out there. Um, and, you know, we, we, we had a bunch of guys that went out there and everybody picked everyone else up it could be you know a guy that just got called up in september it could be someone who's been there you know for 10 years you, you, you know what i mean like everyone everyone chipped in everyone helped um and it was just like i said it was fun you know being a part of it and honestly going to the ballpark every single day um because we kind of had a not expectation that, hey we we're gonna win but we we're like we're gonna win today and if we didn't win we're like that's okay we're gonna we're gonna come out tomorrow we're gonna win then we just kept grinding it was it was something pretty special to be a part of. It is special to win a championship, no doubt. But your greatest impact has been off the field in the fight against cancer. Players all over the league still wearing the K Cancer t-shirts, which you started. It has raised millions in the fight against cancer. How gratifying is it for you to know that you've made such an impact in the fight against cancer? You know, for us, um, you know, when we started our foundation, it was all about helping giving back to those who are in the fight uh, the way that the way that people helped with my wife's grandfather when he was going through his fight and my wife's family uh, and all them. So, uh, you know, for us to be able to to give back like we have and to be able to raise the money and the awareness um, through our, I got one of our shirts on now, but um, through T-shirts and through our cornhole events and through different things that we've done uh, is, is pretty amazing, you know, because, um, you know, honestly, at the end of the day, it, 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 it's all about helping other people. Um, you know, and, and, and it's crazy that it is it has turned into to, to what it has because like I said when we did it when we started here in Memphis, um, you know, we we're just we we're trying to help give back to, to, to those who helped us. Um, but you know, seeing seeing some of the smiles on the faces and you know, being able to help out is really what it's all about. Letting people know who are going through this that, that they're not doing it alone and that people are there um, fighting along with them. Well, you've raised a, a ton of money through your efforts. You've kept roots here in St. Louis. August 23rd is a big event for you coming up. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're doing our cornhole event there in, uh, in St. Louis. Uh, we weren't able to do it last year because of, you know, 
Everybody knows why we couldn't do it last year. Uh, but, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're bringing it back this year, August 23rd. Uh, we're going to be doing our cornhole event uh, in uh, in St. Louis uh, at Anheuser-Busch. Uh, you know, it's one of our – one of my favorite events. Uh, you know, we, we, we do it there in Cardinal Nation. Like you said, has always supported me uh, on the field. But, you know, seeing their support of what we do off the field and helping, uh, you know, helping those in the fight against cancer is is, is really special. And, and that, that kind of really – um, you know, is, is like I said, special to me because of what a great group Cardinal Nation is and how they come out and support um, stuff like that. So, like I said, August 23rd, uh, we'll have some info coming up, you know, this week and next about tickets going on sale. Uh, you can, like I said, go to jasonmottfoundation.org um, and see kind of what we're doing, some more events coming up and, uh, you know, kind of what we're up to and all that kind of stuff. But we're uh, really looking forward to doing it, getting back up there, getting back in person. Uh, seeing some seeing some fans and raising a lot of money and awareness for those in the fight. Hey, Jason, great to catch up and keep up the great work. Thank you. It's great seeing you too, Danny Mac. Many thanks to Jason Mott and John Mozeliak. A reminder that we do this every Sunday at 1030. It's Scoops with Danny Mac on Fox 2. I'll see you next weekend.